Have you ever wondered if we have support in the scholarly literature for the earthquake, the blood moon, and the darkening of the sun? We do, and I'm going to give that to you now. According to the prophet Joel, which is recounted by Luke in Acts 2, 15 to 21, in the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious days of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Matthew recounts in Matthew 27 verses 45 to 46 and 51 to 54 as follows. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lemma, Sebekthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was giving us a direct reference to Psalm 22, which King David wrote around a thousand years prior. In Psalm 22, we hear about the bulls of Bashan, who tore at his clothes, mocked him, and crucified him. And of course, we know that his hands and his feet were pierced, both in the Gospels and as predicted in Psalm 22. In Isaiah 53 and Zechariah 12.10, you might see similar verses. At the bottom of the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rock split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. A little side note on the time reckoning. According to Harold Hayner, the Galilean method of reckoning the timing of the Passover runs from sunrise to sunrise. So using the Galilean method, Nisan 14 began at sunrise on Thursday and Nisan 15 began at sunrise on Friday. The Galilean method was used by the Pharisees and the Synoptics. John used the Judean method of reckoning in which Nisan 14 began at sunset on Thursday night and ended at sunset on Friday night. The Judean method was used by the Sadducees. These differences can also help explain what appear to be discrepancies in the timing of Jesus's appearance before Pontius Pilate, as reported in Mark 15, 25 and John 19, 14. Mark's day used the Galilean 24 hour time period. So the third hour when Jesus was crucified was three hours after the morning began at 6 a.m. Using John's Judean reckoning, the sixth hour when Jesus appeared before Pilate would be six hours after midnight at 6 a.m. Taken together, the Gospels report that Jesus appeared before Pilate around 6 a.m. He was crucified at 9 a.m. and darkness appeared between noon and 3 p.m. when he died. He was buried after that on Friday. There is some other evidence that on the day of the crucifixion, the sun was darkened and or the moon appeared like blood. The report of Pilate, a New Testament apocryphal fragment, see Deliso and Fidani 2014, from the fourth century states, quote, Jesus was delivered to him by Herod, Archelaus, Philip, Annas, Caiaphas, and all the people. At his crucifixion, the sun was darkened, the stars appeared, and in all the world, people lighted lamps from the sixth hour till evening. The moon appeared like blood. Phallus is a relatively unknown pagan author who also cited darkness during the crucifixion, as reported by both him and Africanus. Of course, there were some pagans who objected to these reports. The Gospels indicate Jesus was crucified on Friday, the day of preparation, which some scholars have determined is Nisan 14. See Humphreys and Waddington, 1985. During the time period in which Pontius Pilate served as governor, the only two possibilities in which Nisan 14 fell on a Friday occurred on April 7th in 30 AD and April 3rd in 33 AD. To determine when Nisan 14 fell on a Friday, Humphreys and Waddington reconstructed the first century Jewish calendar using astronomical calculations. To determine which date is appropriate, we refer to John 2.20. Quote, 
They reply, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days. But the temple he had spoken of was his holy body. Assuming this refers to the inner temple, and this is according to Harold Hayner, the date in which the Jews made this statement would be between 30 and 31 AD. If the only Passovers that occurred during Jesus's ministry are the three to which John referred in his gospel, the 33 AD date suggests a ministry of about two and a half years. Some scholars indicate an additional unmentioned Passover, which would add a year to his ministry. Either way, Humphreys and Waddington determined the April 3rd, 33 date is the most appropriate. Scholars have reported that devastating earthquakes occurred in Jerusalem during the year 33. See Mallet 1853 and Rig 1941. This occurred in a region that includes the Dead Sea Fault, which is a plate boundary that separates the Arabian plate and the Sinai subplate, see Garfunkel 1981. This fault has been active since the Miocene, according to Kagan and colleagues in 2011, and the fault is still active today, according to Deliso and Fidani 2014. The fault extends from the Red Sea in the south of the Taurus Mountains to the north. Kagan and colleagues analyzed seismites in the Holocene Dead Sea Basin by constructing two age depth chronological models based on atmospheric radiocarbon ages of short-lived organic debris with a Bayesian model. Seismites are sedimentary beds and structures which are deformed by seismic shaking. The scholars analyzed seismites in different areas of the basin, finding that several synchronous seismites appeared in all sections during particular years including 33 AD. Other years in which earthquakes occurred as evidenced by seismites are 1927, 1293, 1202, 1212, 749, 551, 419, and 33. And then there was one prior in 31 BC. So you can see that these are relatively rare instances. After analyzing laminated sedimentary cores recovered at the shores of the Dead Sea, Migowski and colleagues in 2004 also determined an earthquake in 33 AD with a magnitude of 5.5. They documented earthquakes around 33 AD in 31 BC and 76 AD. The scholars analyzed seismites using radiocarbon dating. We also have other support for the blood moon and the theories of the sun darkening. Humphreys and Waddington compiled ancient Babylonian eclipse records between 26 and 36 AD. A lunar eclipse with a 60% magnitude was recorded on Friday, April 3rd, 33, at the rising moon, which was visible from Jerusalem. This timing and Humphreys and Waddington's 1985 detailed analysis of Jerusalem sun moon coordinates suggest the lunar eclipse occurred in the early evening of the crucifixion. Scholars further believe that the daytime darkness, which occurred during the crucifixion, was a result of a Kamzen dust storm. You can see Driver and the Sibylline Oracles for references to that. So the stones have cried out as Jesus predicted. In conclusion, if you're wondering whether or not we have adequate support for the earthquake, the blood moon and the darkening of the sun that occurred around Jesus' crucifixion, know that you've been in the right place. We have geologic, cosmological, and other support in the scholarly literature. We also, of course, have ancient support, and then we have the Bible. So whether you eat, drink, or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Thank you for coming today. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share with your friends, and come again. Bye-bye.